Hello folks, this is Johnny again, and today we will talk about the rhythm tones and perhaps also the lead tones and whatnot uh, for my latest album Revive. And to be honest, I kind of dreaded making this video because I went about dialing in the rhythm tones in a rather stupid way. It's very and uh, not a very clean way of doing it. So I dialed in the general tone as I was jamming with it. What you should rather do is dial in the tone in the context of the mix. Because jamming with it, it gives you a very different feel than when you actually hear it with stereo recordings, having two rhythm tracks here and then panning them all the way to the left and right and then having it all in context of the mix with all the other instruments. It's Two rather different beasts to tackle. So how I did it was not quite the best way to do it. Um, usually what you end up with doing it this way, dialing in the tone while jamming with it, is in the mix it will sound too bass heavy and um, you will notice resonances that you want to kind of surgically EQ out that you do not notice while you're just jamming with it and it's in mono and on its own. So yeah, in any case, let's still check it out. So this, this video right here, I guess, is kind of me telling you how not to do it. I mean, in the end, the tones, yeah, they are enjoyable, I guess, but it took me too long to get there. And you could do it much quicker in a, in, when you do it differently. In any case, uh, let's just dive into the mix and whatnot. So here are the two rhythm guitar tracks, panned hard left and hard right. And I use two slightly different tones for each side because that gives you a bigger stereo width and more imaging and whatnot when the two guitar tracks just have something different going on. When they are too similar, then also potential problems with the tones become too apparent and it can be a little bit tougher to uh, get them out of there. Having two slightly similar tones, they can rather complement each other so the potential problems of both tones actually don't become very apparent and rather they enrich the whole experience of listening to, to the whole mix. So for the left track, let's hope my mouse works this time, okay. For the left guitar, I have the Proco Rats going into the Soldano lead channel with a little bit of EQ shaping, just taking down some, some lower mids and raising that upper range. The modern cap, which is the rectifier cap, and then a little bit of EQing already going on here, taking down some resonances, actually just three resonances. This one's not doing anything here. And this is pretty much the tone that I dialed in while jamming with it. And then this is followed by the tape desk. And then for the right track, uh, very similar setup, also pro Corette, but with the uh, Randall Grail amplifier. I guess you can see the settings here, I hope. So on both the, the amps I took down the mids quite a bit and raised the treble quite a bit. Also here a little bit of EQ balancing, again the modern cap, pretty similar setup to the other one and again a little bit here of resonance filtering. So this is also very similar to uh, to the other track, except for the different amp that gives it a little bit of a different distortion characteristic and that can give your guitars a bit more stereo width. That's one way you could do it. You could also use the same amp for both tracks, but use a different cap or different mic position on the cap or use a completely different tone altogether with different amp and cap setups and whatnot, or even different guitars, whatever. As long as you do something different uh, between the two guitar tracks, you will get more stereo width. And then, you know what, let's take that out. Oh, no, wait, first of all, let, let's just listen into what that guitar tone sounds like on its own. Let's take out here the master channel because there's saturation and whatnot going on. I don't want saturation to go on with only the guitars running because that can mess it up. So here we go.
you know what? Let me censor both of these tracks. Just listen to the one now. And now the other. There you can see they have some differences going on. Okay, and now let me take off here all the EQing on the bus channel and listen to this. Nah, it's quite it's quite a bit different. So uh, let's dive in, shall we? First EQ here, pretty drastic stuff going on, uh, taking care of the lower range and the lower mids and that mid range around 1k was quite drastic. This for example, if I would have dialed in the uh, tones in TH3 in the context of the mix, I probably wouldn't have been, wouldn't have needed to be uh, and the the drastic with the CQ. So that's that. Or I could have gone a little bit simpler and instead of doing all this stuff here to the lower range, I could have raised the upper range a little bit and then just give it a smaller dip here in the 1K range. And that probably would also have been good. Um, I don't know, at that time I was more into uh, use reductive EQ before boosting EQ, but you can actually run into the same trouble as when you only use boosting EQ. The thing with boosting EQ is you can tend to boost too much in too many places to constantly even out the move that you did beforehand. But the same can happen with reductive EQ. When you take care of a problematic region and you dip it down with a narrow EQ band, then another problematic region may pop up afterwards. And then you need to take care of that as well. Uh, so you just gotta... Uh, uh, I also don't know what the balance is there. <laughs> it's kind of tough sometimes to find. Nowadays, I kind of think make quick moves according to the first impression that you have of the tone. And that should get you into the ballpark much quicker and it probably helps you not to worry too much about unnecessary details. So that's that after this EQ. You notice it sounds quite a bit harsher now. The brightness is good now and also the whole balance according to the mix is good, but it's harsh and we need to take care of some more resonances. And then this happens. <laughs> I have five frequencies here that I'm dipping down with very narrow cues. So the three resonances that I already dipped down in TH3 weren't enough in the context of the mix. And this had to be done as well. And now it sounds like this. Wait, without it? With? Uh, it sounds quite a bit smoother now. And then, but it doesn't have enough presence to really stick out in the mix. You know what? Let's put it in the mix. Let's um, take this one out again and this one out. You know this without any EQ, it actually sounds pretty decent, yeah. But to my taste, uh, there's just too much, too much of that honkiness going on at around 1k. Especially when I compare this with my reference mixes, I noticed this quite, uh, quite heavily that 1k is too strong here. So I have to take that down definitely. But then, of course, I run into the trouble of here the lower range also being too strong in context of everything. So this had to be done. And now with this EQ, you know this? Mm -hmm. 
Here it sounds a bit more, be a bit, nah, I kind of want to say more balanced, a bit better in the mix. It also pops out a little bit more in that upper range, but of course it's too harsh with all those uh, resonances going on. And now with all the surgical cutting here. Yeah, this sounds better now, smoother definitely. But of course we lose a bit of presence, it's not really popping out of the mix and raising the volume doesn't really help. So I need to raise that 2 to 3k range where we have more of that presence and the guitars going on. And that's what this EQ is for. Alright, so let's take it all out again and put it all in. Yeah, that's that. And then I have a limiter in here. This is to get control on palm mutes. Usually I would use a multiband compressor or dynamic EQ uh, to do that. But in this album, with this tone and the kind of feel I was going for, using a multiband compressor to tame the low end on the palm mutes kind of sucked out some of that, of that power and that girth. And using a limiter instead, to just keep the volume in general in check, you still retain or you still keep that girth going on. So yeah, that's that. So I think we can just leave it with the rhythm guitars right now. I'll get into the other guitar tracks then next video. And bass guitar track. Oh, that one I am looking forward to. It's I am ah, and this is my proudest bass tone so far. So look forward to that. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. And please leave it in the comments below what other details you want me to talk about from this new album, and I'll be sure to do a video about it. Then I shall see you next time. <laughs>